Watching something spin can be surprisingly satisfying, especially when that spin is generating electricity. This is basically a flywheel battery, but it has two crucial differences. It not only uses water as its mass, it can also shift that mass while spinning. And that's for a very good reason, because believe it or not, it might just be the solution that can save our struggling power grid at the moment. So how does it work? What are the advantages of a shape-shifting flywheel? And why use water for its mass? In case you didn't know, our power grid is under serious pressure at the moment. Normally, electricity flows from a central power plant through the grid into your home. So, when you flip a switch, the light turns on. Simple. Now just for a moment, picture the system like this. The power plant as a water pump. The grid as a pipeline. And that switch you just turned on as a water tap. When you open the tap, water flows out, which makes the pressure inside the pipe drop. So, the pump spins up to compensate. That's basically how the grid keeps itself in balance. But here's the problem. We used to be in total control with just one pump. But nowadays, the sun and wind are doing more and more of the pumping, which are basically thousands of tiny and unpredictable pumps. And they're all pumping into that same pipeline. But we can't control the sun or the wind. Sometimes they all pump at once, but other times none at all. The result, the pressure or power in our case, constantly fluctuates. Too low causes blackouts, and too high makes systems overload. Either way is bad. To fix this, more and more flywheel batteries are being added to the power grid. They can be spun up when there's extra power and let them spin down to release it again when we need it. It is fast, clean and mechanical. But they have one limitation. They spin at a fixed speed, which means they can only output a fixed amount of power over a fixed amount of time. Great for short bursts. But not enough yet to truly balance the grid. Unless we can find a way that makes them smarter. How? Well, ever noticed an ice skater spins faster when they pull in their arms? Watch what happens. When she makes herself smaller, she starts to spin faster. And when she makes herself larger, she slows down again. Now imagine applying that same physics to a flywheel. What if we could change the mass while it's spinning? Would that let us control how fast it spins? How much power it outputs? And how long it lasts? That's where this battery comes in. This flywheel battery can adjust its mass while spinning, just like the ice skater. That means we'll be able to test if this idea could actually be useful or not. But building this thing wasn't as easy as you might think. Not only because the weight needs to be constantly and perfectly balanced to avoid vibrations, but also because the forces involved in spinning any weight at high speed can quickly build up to very high levels. With that in mind, I started off with a sturdy base and mounted a 3D printed housing which holds two bearings to fit the battery's main 20mm steel axle. This axle should be strong enough to handle most of those forces. To spin up the flywheel, we'll be using a powerful brushless drone motor. Not only does it have enough torque to get things moving quickly, once the battery is up to speed, I can switch its wiring and use it as a generator instead. So one motor does both jobs, charging and discharging. To measure how fast the flywheel is spinning, I added a Hall effect sensor near the base. Whenever a small magnet that is mounted in the underside of the pulley passes by, the sensor triggers. And that gives us an accurate way to calculate RPM in real time. Simple, reliable and contactless. Now, remember how this flywheel can shift its mass? That's controlled by a small geared motor, mounted inside the central column. It drives a spindle connected to the five water-filled tubes, and the spindle moves them in or out as needed. Onboard electronics handle the rest. It's all completely self-contained and can be controlled via a wireless serial link. So nothing needs to touch the flywheel to change the mass while it spins. To control everything, I made a basic control interface with a rotary knob to spin up the motor. Two buttons to move the mass in or out and a screen showing the current RPM, power output and total energy released. 
But before I start flinging water around the room, let's run a quick test with the tubes empty. Just to make sure everything is balanced and running smoothly. So far so good. Time to fill those tubes with water. Now using water as mass has some hidden benefits. Not only is it cheap and easy to source of course, but it also lets us easily fine tune the balance of the flywheel by just adding or removing tiny amounts in each cylinder, which helps prevent wobble and stress on the bearings. Especially at the high speeds the battery is going to spin at in a moment. Ok, so everything is filled up. Let's make sure everything is balanced correctly. But perhaps more importantly, find out if the 3D printed plastic construction can handle the new forces that come into play with the added weight. Now, in case the 3D printed parts wouldn't hold up, which is always a risk with high speed moving parts, we've got a great fallback option. PCB way. Whether you need CNC machine parts or even want them 3D printed in metal, PCB Way makes that surprisingly easy. Just upload the files of the parts you want them to make for you at PCBWay.com and you'll get an instant online quote. It's super easy. They deliver fast. Their quality is outstanding. And it's more affordable than you might think. I personally love you. Using their services so check out the link in the description to see what PCB way can do for you projects full speed let's pull in the mesh hold up the spindle doesn't seem to work Huh? The spindle works fine. Would that mean it isn't strong enough? I must admit that I didn't calculate the forces on the spindle beforehand. I knew the torque of the spindle motor would be enough to push at least 20 kilograms, and thought it would be more than enough. But I was wrong, I guess. It can't be that much more than 20 kilo, right? Let's see what happens when we add a spring inside to help push the two parts of the battery apart. This spring adds 7 kilograms of force when fully compressed. Let's hope that will do the trick. Full speed, here we go. Ok, so I did some calculations. Something I should have started with turns out. Because when the motor is turning at full speed with the weights at their fullest position, the forces on the spindle are 51 kg. That's two times more than what I had in mind. Which means we need a spindle motor with double the power. Or we need to find a way to somehow add a second motor within the limited space we have. And it wasn't easy. But I opted for the second choice and added an extra motor. The question is, will it be enough? Ok, full speed, let's pull in that mesh. Yeah, perfect, exactly what we need. Now, let's do that again, but this time, watch and listen closely what happens when we pull in the weight. You can clearly hear the dramatic increase in RPM. So it looks like we are on the right track. Now we've got everything set up and running, it's finally time to run some serious tests to see if this could be used in real life, or if all of this was just a waste of time. First, let's see how much power the battery generates with the weights fixed in the most outer position. 
just like a normal flywheel battery basically. Okay, so the total generated power is 246 joule in 13 seconds. Now the big question is, what will be the output when we spin up the battery again, switch the motor to generator and pull in the mass towards the center? And that's 231 joule in 7 seconds, so yes. Pulling in the mass does more than just speed up the RPM. It changes the way the battery performs. It gives us control over the output, the timing and the energy flow. And that could be a game changer. Because instead of just storing power, this battery can start to adapt. And it might just be the key to unlock a more flexible, resilient and stable power grid. But why not just use a variable transmission on a normal flywheel, I hear you think. And that's a good one indeed but everything has its pros and cons. The truth is, we already have plenty of standard solutions in my opinion. What we need more of are the weird ones. Because every time you try something unconventional, no matter how odd it seems, you open the door to new insights. Ideas like these might not replace the old ones, but they can challenge how we think, or even spark something better in someone else's mind. And worst case, you learn something new, but that's never a waste, right? What do you think? Could this be the first step toward a new kind of battery altogether? Or should I scale this up to power something real? Let me know what you think in the comments below.